All right, so it is time for us to grab data coming from the Strapi CMS. And in order for us to do that, what we'll do is create a new page. So in the pages folder, I'm going to create films.js. And this particular route is going to be responsible for listing the films from our Strapi CMS. Now, we are going to require the layout, that is for sure. So I'm going to go to the components folder and grab the layout. And we're then going to create a component that I'm going to name films list. And let's see here. Great. And we're just going to do an export default films list. Okay, so that's the basic skeleton code that we're going to be using. And this component of this page essentially is going to return the layout and in between the layout I'm just going to grab some pre-made HTML and for now it's just going to say films and now we need to pause a little bit and talk about how to do data fetching in Nuxt.js now if you check the documentation for for Nuxt on data fetching you will see that there are a bunch of ways that you can fetch data you can fetch data for server-side rendering, for static side generation, for client-side rendering, for dynamic routes, and for incremental static regeneration, or ISR for short. Now, we're going to talk about each of these options, or at least we're going to investigate some of these options. So if you want to do server-side rendering, then the method that you need to use in your Nuxt.js page is called get server-side props. So I'm just going to write it out here export async function get server side props like so and get server side props as i said is needed when you want to do server side rendering so what that means is that any code that you put in here is going to be run on the server side and it's never going to be executed by the browser all right the other option that you may have for data fetching is going to be i'm just going to write it out as well um, get static props like so okay and get static get static props is for static side generation so if you export this function then you basically do enable static side generation for your next application or, or rather for a page and in this case the data required to render the page is going to be available at build time ahead of the user's request. And data can come from a headless CMS, for example, right, which is going to be um, a use case for us potentially. However, just to let you know, we are going to be using get server side props and not get static props purely because we will also be using this thing called the SWR, which is about client-side rendering. And client-side data fetching is also possible using Next.js, and you can use the use effect hook in React, or you can use this thing called the SWR, which is stale while revalidate. And essentially, this is a pattern in Next.js that allows the HTTP cache invalidation strategy to be done fairly automatically by Next.js. And it's really great because what we're going to set up is this SWR strategy, which will go and return data from a cache if it's there, so that's the stale, then it's going to send a fetch request to revalidate the data, and then it's going to come back with some up-to-date data. So it's ideal for things um that maybe do update frequently in the client so maybe you know we're going to be adding films to the database quite frequently and so we want to make sure that that is being listed so you have a bunch of options right to do data fetching and in this particular case we will stick to using get static props now in get static props we need to find a way to go and fetch the appropriate data from the strappy headless cms and then we're going to return that as props which we will then extract in the film list component definition here for this page and then we can use that of course in our return method 
So putting that together, we need to fetch the data right here. Now I'm going to do two things. Number one is and I'm going to create a .env file. And I'm going to create it at the root of my application. And once that .env file is created, what I'm going to do is in my command palette, I just want to make sure that I have show secrets on, and I'm going to create something called a next underscore public underscore strappy underscore URL, and I'm going to make that equal to HTTP localhost 133C, uh, 1337, uh, excuse me, slash API, which is basically the base uh, URL that we have. So that later on, if we deploy this, we can just override this with whatever deployment value we're going to get. And the other thing is that I'm going to take uh, not that API folder, but rather I'm going to create a folder here at the root of my project and call it lib. And in that lib folder, I'm going to create a file, let's call it api.js. And in here, I will export an asynchronous function called the fetcher. And URL options instantiated as a, an empty object. And then we're going to say let response. And I say if no options, then response is going to be equal to await fetch the URL. So basically, I'm just creating a, a wrapper around the fetch API fetch URL options, and then I'll just say cons data is equal to await response.json and return the data, right? So just to wrap it around the fetch API that we have access to here. Awesome. And so now let's go back to films. And in here, I'm going to say const films response. Or you could call this whatever you want and I'm just going to say await and then call this fetcher and with this I'm also importing it and I'm just going to fetch let's go with process.env dot next underscore public underscore strappy underscore URL and then we can go slash films okay and theoretically Films response is going to already contain the data that I need. And I'm just going to return props. And the prop that I want to return is called films. And that's going to be equal to the film response. Now, actually, that's just to verify that things work. So I'm going to log film response. Now, before you run this statement, just make sure that you have the Strapi instance up and running from the previous section of this course. Because of course, without that, you will not see any data coming back for this API call. All right, so let's try to launch uh, the films page. So I'm just going to go to slash films. All right, I just realized that because I did a .env file, I had to actually stop the npm run dev command and start it again, of course. So just make sure that you stop and restart that because it's you know, it won't be able to load that environment variables uh, and the .env file for us. And as you can see now, if I go to the films page and just do refresh, but you already saw that, I'm getting some data back. So I get the data back with the IDs and attributes. So this will, of course, be the response from Strapi along with some pagination information. So this is exactly what we wanted to get. Now, the other question is, how do we add these props to the films list here. And that's very easy. We're just going to extract films from the props. And once we do that, we should be able to iterate through the films. Okay, so films will be now available here. But instead of iterating through the films, we're going to take another approach. Well, we will iterate through them, of course, eventually. But our approach is going to be that we will create a new component. We're going to call that films.js. And in this particular component, which I'm just going to copy and paste in here, we will accept films and we just return this list here, which already has some styles. 
And then once the films are available, we just iterate through them using a map function and we return list item for each film. And then we just print out the title of those films. And so what we can do here in the films page after this H1, I'm just going to say, well, load the films component and just far pass the, uh, the films like that to that component. Okay, and hopefully, if we now visit the application, look at that, we now have the list of our films printed right here. And of course, I can't yet click on them because obviously we need to write that functionality, but we now have data being displayed from Strapi itself. So in the next video, we're going to convert this films page so that it will have pagination. And for pagination, we're going to be using the use SWR hook, which is a stale while revalidate hook, which I talked about at the beginning of this video.